Uyghurs are a Turkic-speaking Muslim minority in China, living mostly in the sensitive frontier province of Xinjiang. And the Chinese government has been treating them absolutely terribly. We've been waking up to horrific stories every day, heartbreaking images separating mothers from their children. They live in a police state, where they're monitored by one of the most advanced and intrusive surveillance systems in the world. Imagine that the police force you to stand in front of a camera for biometric data collection. Every online activity is tracked. Imagine that the police force you to install a spying app on your phone. Their religion is restricted. Many traditional Muslim names are even banned for newborns. Party officials are frequently attacking Islam as very old-fashioned, very backward. These are some of the suspected detention camps where an estimated one million Uyghurs are held. Many of them have not been heard from since being detained. And look, if that weren't enough to make it clear what these camps really are, just listen to one former detainee describe what she went through. Each woman gets two minutes to go to the toilet. They tell you to be quick, quick, quick. If you're not quick enough, they shock you with an electric baton on the back of your head. It really hurt, and they did it a lot. Even after being shocked, we had to say, thank you, teacher, we will not be late next time. She was in two different camps, then was transferred into forced labor at a glove factory, all while separated from her family for two years. And while they were eventually reunited, they are understandably still haunted to this day. For two years, you didn't see your mom? I lost the fact that I was you guys spent time in the camps. I mean, what was your crime? What were you each taken in for? If you were caught speaking Uyghur, you were locked up in a dark room. We also had to write out lines of praise to the Chinese Communist Party. Every 10 days, we had to stick our arms through to get an injection. We didn't know what it was, but the younger women stopped having their periods. We had to do sit-ups in the nude. It didn't matter if you were 14 or 84. That's how they violated our honor. In 2015, ethnic Uyghur Mihigul Tursun, then a citizen of China, gave birth to triplets in Egypt, where she'd been living and working. And barely a month later, she flew home with them to Xinjiang, a region of western China. At the airport, she says Chinese police detained her and took away her babies. I asked her, where is my baby? Please give me my baby. Then he... Taped your mouth? Yes. Mihri Gul says police jailed and interrogated her for the next three months. The day of her release, she went to the children's hospital in Urumqi to see her infants. When I come to hospital, doctor said, okay, my baby can go outside hospital. He said, yes, he died. I loved him. What? What? What died? He said, your son died yesterday morning, six o'clock. I don't believe it. And I scream, why you kill my son? And they say, if you scream, I call, please uh, stop. Be quiet. They forced us to take unknown pills and to drink some kind of white liquid. The pill caused us to lose consciousness and reduced our cognition level. The white liquid caused loss of menstruation in some women and extreme bleeding in others and even death. 
I also experienced torture in a tiger chair the second time I was detained. I was taken to a special room and placed in a high chair. Bands held my arms and the legs in place and tightened when they pressed a button. The guards put a helmet on my shaved head. Each time I was electrocuted, my whole body would shake violently and I could feel the pain in my veins. I thought I would rather die than go through this torture. I begged them to kill me. I witnessed nine deaths in my cell in three months. I cannot imagine how many deaths there must be in all the camps. <laughs> Bırak bir kamerde ben bırak tutulum. Şu hafta da tuhaf hafta hem de kızla sonra kandı günlüğe işkiden üşüttüm. Kızla sonra açık gitti. Aşağı sonra kandı kırgın kızla hem de sizin kimin aklı oldu. Kim akılların eli oldu. Kızla hem de bedelleri kükürü. Kamer yok ya batalı da. Şey aşağı açık. Kazak balısı jigirin yaptı yaşlı bala. Aşağı sen de yakışlıklı bilmeysen ki yakışlıkçı biz şunca bir saksan bilmeden hem de hem de görse de bir şekilde orup ben orup ki nasıl işte ne işe ben tüm üstel kullarımız işe bana işte ne işe ne oluyordu ki nasıl ne oluyordu sen Allah'a yok They were three men Not one but three They did whatever evil their mind could think of, and they didn't spare any part of my body, biting it to the extent that it was disgusting to look at. They didn't just rape, they were barbaric. They had bitten all over my body. They had an electric baton. I didn't know what it was. It was pushed into my private parts and I was tormented with electric shocks. Çıkıp kese bir 15 yıkırım günün açıda balırım bilen yüz görüşüme dep çıkan. Lekin emeliyatı onda bulmadı. Bir katı balırım bilen paranış burası çıkıp kalsa mı? Şunu deyim mi? Mesela'dan bir gün mü ağırlığı tıkalamayım mı? Ben her gün mü balırımını taşı vermeyim mi? Those women and those children and those old men that are being thrown in jails, they're our fathers. There are children. There are there 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 are bond to them is la ilaha illallah, which is thicker than blood. We might not see the light at the end of the tunnel. We might not see the Uyghurs fully freed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us to see that. Allah created us to do whatever we can so that when we meet him we can say, Oh Allah, this is what I did about the Uyghur situation. And perhaps in that is our salvation. <laughs>